You're watching an amazing podcast from an amazing podcast company. This week's episode is brought to you by Youngstown Tile. For spectacular flooring, go bold, go local, go Youngstown Tile. And by River Rock at the Amp. Saturdays in the summertime, there's no other place to be than at the Amp in Warren. And before you go, stop by the Sunrise Inn for the best food in Warren. And by Rick Perillo, author of the new true crime thriller, There's More Bodies Out There. Available now on rickperillo.com. Welcome everybody, Johnny Ciccatelli. Rick Perello, Vince Guerreri, Jimmy Naples, we are the Vice Squad. Thank you so much for joining us. Episode one is Mahoning Valley Mob 101, written by none other than Rick Perello. Great job. Thank you. Great, Thank you, John. Great way to kick us off and get our, our season started. So, Rick, you know, tell us a little bit about your background, first of all. Well, you know, I have a background in, in law enforcement, of course. I was a, a cop for 33 years in... Uh, in uh, Lyndhurst, Ohio, on the east side of Cleveland, which uh, is uh, on the map for the uh, for uh, the murder of Danny Green in 1977. Now, I, I didn't become a cop until 1986. Uh, I was only 15 years old at the time that Danny Green was killed. But uh, you tell us that you have an alibi. <laughs> I have an alibi. I was at home. I was 15. Who knows what I was doing then? Probably doing my drum lessons. Um, and, uh, you know, I have a background in music, but uh, when I was a kid, probably 10 years old, you know, I, there, there, were, there was talk in my family, my grandfather had been murdered. It had something to do with the mob, and uh, there wasn't a whole lot of talk about it, and that kind of stuck with me. And so in, in, in later years, I got interested in researching and finding out, you know, why was he killed, what did, what did that have to do with? So I started researching. I was 18 or 19 years old, and went to the public library, the wonderful public library, started flipping through the microfilm, and I found that it was a big headline. You know, it wasn't a little story, it was a big headline. It basically was the story of the beginning of the mafia in Cleveland. And uh, so I continued with the research, and uh, it, it was just a, a, a huge, big story. And, and I learned, you know, the circumstances of my grandfather's murder. My, uh, three of my great uncles had been murdered, and that just really uh, uh, cemented my interest in learning about organized crime in yeah. Cleveland, Northeast Ohio, and, uh, and I decided to write a book. And that, that's uh, how the rise and fall of the Cleveland Mafia started, and that's uh, brought me to where I am today. Yeah, Rick's written several great books. Guys, if, you, if you're looking for something to read, you can check those out at rickperello.com. Um, you know, from Kill the Irishman, the rise and fall of the Cleveland Mob, then there's also um, Bullets, Bombs, and Bribes, the Shondor Burns. Bombs, Bullets, and Bribes, yeah, that's a, Excuse me. a yeah. fair, fairly recent one. And uh, yeah, and, Super and, Thief. Uh, Super Thief in development for film, I'm hoping. Got my yeah. fingers crossed. We'll see what so happens. Phil Christopher, he's had some time in Youngstown. Yeah. And we're coming to you guys from Youngstown, Ohio. And, you know, the three of us were born here. Rick, you were up in Cleveland. Cleveland, yeah. But, as we learned in your episode, Cleveland and Youngstown are, you know, Connected at the hip when it comes to the mob. Yep. So, for anybody who doesn't know the Ohio story of the mob, and we just watched your episode, so they're, they're learning now. I mean, how do you describe Youngstown to people who only have New York in, in mind? Well, I, you know, I, I, I try and educate them, and this is something I learned during my research that, you know, Back during, uh, you know, the time that I was getting interested in this in the 1980s, you know, when, when the average person thought of the mafia, they would think maybe of New York, they would think of Chicago, they might think of Las, Las Vegas. But, you know, many of them, and I didn't know at the time, uh, did not know that there were roughly, depending on how you count them, maybe two dozen mm -hmm. crime families in the United States. You know, East Coast, Midwest, West yeah. Coast, the South. So, uh, you know, Youngstown was was this region. You know, roughly halfway between Cleveland and Pittsburgh, that was split. You know, in territory between those two 
those two crime families, and they had you know crews here that were loyal to both to both families, and uh, you know as, as you know it's it's a it's a unique uh, it's got a unique history this town, and they, you know we don't want yeah. to just slam Youngstown. I mean the Mahoney Valley, you know, sure. uh, with all of its uh, villages and townships and Warren. <laughs> uh, yeah, quite a unique history when it comes to to uh, organized crime, traditional organized crime, the mob, yeah. La Cosa Nostra, the mafia. Is there a, is there a point? Obviously, you've done a lot of research and a lot of writing, encompassing really the entire 20th century. Is there a, a story or a uh, point in time that you uh, are particularly interested in? Well, because of my family's background, mm -hmm. you know, my grandfather, my great uncles, the the 1920s and 1930s, which of course was the most difficult to research because of the, the time that went by, that was certainly the most, um, you might say, close, close to my heart because it was family, you know, and... and uh, now that actually was in what used to be called, and nobody remembers this anymore, there's a little Italy in Cleveland because there was a big Italy, big Italy and yeah. that's where all this was. Yeah, lower, lower Woodland Avenue. Well, it was, I mean, it was, there were so many different incidents that occurred in what, you know, what's called the Sugar War, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which was... Uh, but they all seemed to happen uh, around the same intersection, didn't they? Well, that, that was, if you're talking about 110th and Woodland... And the Bloody lower, Corner, the old Luna yeah, Park, yes. Yeah, 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 that was, uh, there were a lot of murders that occurred there, but I think it was actually lower Woodland Avenue that was, was, was Big Italy mm -hmm. originally, and um, yeah, there was a lot. There was just so much that went on, but because you know there was a, a blood tie for me, that yeah. really uh, it was really a labor of love. And plus the fact it was my first book, you know, it was a, a nine-year nine-year project. Yeah, and I swore I'd never never do that again. Never <laughs> write a second book. <laughs> it becomes an addiction, doesn't it? It kind of well, it kind of was. And I'll tell you when that happened. When I when I when that first book came out. The rise and fall of the Cleveland Mafia. You know, when you're published, they, 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 um, and you just published a book. You, you know, you get a, you get books from the publisher. You know, like kind of hot off the press. Yeah. And uh, my wife and I, we opened up. Uh, we're recently uh, new, newly married. Bottle of champagne. Opened up the box. There's that book, hardcover book. I got that book in my hand, and I thought, you know what? I got to do this again. Yeah. So it was kind of, it was kind of an addiction. Yeah. The greatest moments in my life. The day I got engaged, my wedding is a blur. The day we brought uh, our daughter home from the hospital, the day she was born was also a blur. And whenever you open up a box of books with your name on the front of it, you know? Yeah, that's a, it's a proud moment. There's a lot of work that goes into it. I mean, you know, you just uh, years of, of, yeah. of research and digging. And, uh, and for me, it was tough, too, because there were, there were older members of my family who did not really look kindly on me digging and, and bringing this stuff yeah. back out mm -hmm. and um, so that was a little bit tough and my father uh, it, it, he wasn't thrilled in the beginning but I kind of won him over after a while yeah. you know and he uh, I think in the end he was he was proud of the fact that I had actually got it published took yeah. took a took a few years but finally found a publisher how my grandfather would have would have felt <laughs> I, I don't know about that <laughs> Let me ask you this, because we're kind of in the same boat. Yeah, right? yeah, right. You know, right. so my grandfather and my great uncles, you know, were all, you know, gangsters and, yeah. you know, did what they did. And my, I got some of the same reaction from family, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Leave it alone. I have a cousin that lives up in Euclid, um, and she, you know, lost her mind when I first started the, <laughs> when I originally did my first uh, video post which was the one of the Naples brothers. Mm -hmm. I did that for YSU. They had a little show on the Fridays called Light the Wick. And I said, let me come up with something new. And I came up with Light the Wick, I get it. Moments in Mahoning, right? So I started doing, you know, the Warner Brothers and then the carousel that got moved from my door apart. And I said, perfect time for me to do my uncles. Yeah. And, you know, I put it together, showed it to my dad, and he liked it. He, you know, he was fine with it. So I posted it. My aunt went crazy. <laughs> went crazy. The post that she sent me on Facebook was ridiculous, you know. And and I told my dad. So my dad called her. You know, he told her, he says, you weren't even here. You don't even know what happened. You were away at college. Yeah. <laughs> and, and her last name's not even Naples now. It was actually never Naples. But, you know, her, her, her mother was a Naples. Yeah. And, you know. And so your history is much more recent. 
than, than, well, than mine. And that too. And so that's kind of an issue that I ran into as well because, you know, let's be honest. There's still guys out there that are made and that are working in these various cities, right? Sure. It's not like it used to be, yeah. but they're still around. And anytime somebody comes up with something new about the mob, it's going to perk somebody's ears up somewhere. Yeah. Because somebody has some involvement somewhere. So we got some phone calls that came in to people that you know used to work for Uncle Joey. You know, my dad was his friends were getting calls and they were thinking it was my dad posting all this stuff, and here it was me. You know, so I had to kind of explain what we were doing and how we were doing it. And yeah. It's like once word got back of how we were doing things, everybody was kind of pretty cool with it. And, you know, so but. Some of the things I tried to do my dad didn't like, I was going to do a shirt with the Naples Brothers on it, and he's like, absolutely not, <laughs> you know, but, because I had people that wanted it, and you know, sometimes you get, you know, you think over yourself a little bit, and don't think yeah. about how everybody else is going to feel about it, so I kind of had to pull that back a little bit. And yeah. it down, but. but for the, the guys that are still, you know, or, or, or around, you know, or, or got into that, you know, there's a certain... Uh, there's a certain validation in being uh, being attached to that, and uh, sure. and there, there's an episode of the uh, Sopranos when Christopher is, is you know wants to be he wants to be inducted and 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 he's all in this depression and this funk and then he gets his get he gets uh, mentioned in a newspaper article and, and all of a sudden he's he comes to <laughs> life and and um, but I, uh, I I think that that. Uh, there was a period of time where I was going through this thing where uh, I had my, my wife and my mother, like within a period of a few months, say, aren't you worried? This is during Kill the Irishman research for the book. Yeah. And uh, I was thinking about it, and I was starting to get to know some of these guys. So I went to one of them who was, who was pretty well established, but I had become friendly with him. He was kind of almost semi-retired, you might say. And I said, you know, do you think I have anything to worry about with, the, with, with these guys? And he said, he said, Rick, the guys who are going to be the most pissed with you are the ones who don't get your name mentioned, <laughs> get, get, don't get their name mentioned in your book, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. I wrote something for Cleveland Magazine, because Cleveland Magazine was all over mob coverage in the 70s. Yeah. And I wrote yeah. something uh, last year when, um, when Ronnie Carabia died. And my editor actually said to me, is this something that's going to get us sued or killed? And I said, well... He's dead, so it's not going to get us sued for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and that was your answer, right? Yes. <laughs> right? The four of us had this idea for over a year, germinating and slowly building and building. But now that we have this audience out there, we can't wait to get you guys more episodes. Stay tuned for another episode of the Vice Squad podcast coming your way uh, biweekly here for the first half of the season. And then we'll take a little hiatus and come back with six more episodes. But we hope you enjoy it. We hope you like and share these videos and subscribe to our channels and you know, help us get this out there. We want to get the Vice Squad pod to anybody who enjoys mob stories, anybody who's doing history and you know, anything about Ohio, the Mahoning Valley. True crime. True crime. So definitely uh, give us a, a like, share, and leave a review. That's all I can ask. So thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Let's get some more food, and we'll see you guys yeah. next show. That was an amazing podcast from an amazing podcast company. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like and subscribe buttons and share it with your friends. It goes a long way in helping us produce more amazing content. And please support our amazing sponsors.